G'day, I'm James, and welcome to Straight Up Curriculum Mathematics for the 21st century. Today I've been asked to talk about the quadratic formula, a very famous formula that's been around for a couple of thousands of years, basically, that solves equations of this type. Some are variable squared, some involve the variable and some numbers, and apparently equaling zero. Always have to equal zero, apparently. And yeah, so there's a wonderful piece of mathematics here, and actually a great uh, achievement of humankind to figure out how to solve equations like this. There's a wonderful story behind this. But we're citizens of the 21st century. If you actually were doing some work, you know, doing some engineering problem or some astronomy problem, and you came up with an equation like this and needed to solve it, what would a citizen of the 21st century do? Well, they would do the smartest thing possible. Just type it into Google and out will pop the answers. We have the technology to answer these things with absolute ease today. today. So if the goal is to get answers, be a 21st century citizen and just type into the computer and out will pop your answers for you. Brilliant, fabulous, wonderful. But what I want to do now is actually say, okay, but this is still a standard part of the curriculum, not because it's about getting answers to these equations anymore, because it actually represents a fabulous, fabulous technique and process for sharpening one's problem solving skills, for thinking, for actually being flexible and agile with your wits and your brain and just follow your nose to solve complex problems. That's the life skill here. So don't think of this curriculum as actually important content. It kind of isn't. Actually, what is important about it, though, is the thinking process behind it. It's important life skills being developed by this particular vehicle right here, of this particular content. All right, all right. So here's my advice. The quadratic formula for solving these quadratic equations. My first piece of advice is, given that's in the 21st century, and given I just said it's about thinking, Ignore the formula. Ignore the formula. Let me show you the problem solving process that actually is the key to why we want to think through this stuff sometime in our lives. So I want to talk about the quadratic formula without actually ever doing the quadratic formula. Have you got for that? Because it's about thinking and problem solving. Thinking and problem solving. That's the key. That's the 21st century key. Thinking and problem solving. All right. The key in this is actually the name. Quad. Quad. That's actually a very weird name if you actually stop and think about it. Quad, what does quad mean? When we think of quadrangles and quadriceps and, and, and quadruples, you're thinking four. Quad is the Latin prefix for four. And the first question you have to ask yourself is, what's an equation got to do with the number four? Look at an equation like this. Where's the four in that? In fact, it's x squared. It's not x to the fourth power. That's really weird. In fact, if you really think about it, it's totally weird. If I've got an equation like ax plus b equals zero, then we call those linear equations. And you probably learned in middle school that if you graph equations like this, they actually uh, create straight line graphs. Hence the name linear equations makes sense. If I talk about something like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, well, that's the quad, which is weird, four. But it's weird because if you go up one high to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, then we call those cubics cubics because we see x cubed right there and then we say a x to the fourth plus b x cubed and so on we call those quartics which is weird quartic is four linear four three four and the next one a x to the fifth and so on we call those quintics quintic makes quint means five a x to the sixth we'll call those oh now we're getting kind of strange hextics a x to the seven we call those septics I don't know, I don't know. Anyhow, but uh, first power of x, second power of x, third power of x, fourth power of x, fifth power of x, sixth power of x, makes sense for cubics, quartics, quintics, but why are those called quad? Why do we go basically one, four, three, four, five, six, seven? Weird. Well, the answer is, the great, great revelation that humankind had about solving these equations was the power of a very simple quadrilateral, a four-sided shape. Thing is, we're going to talk about four-sided shapes because the whole quadratic formula is about the power of that picture. In fact, let me, let me talk about this. There's a rectangle, a quadrangle, four angles, or quadrilateral, four sides. So that's another word for, for rectangle. And let me just add this little element to this rectangle. Suppose I told you this rectangle has area 36. And you say, great, there's a rectangle of area 36, a quadrilateral, quadrilateral of area 36. The trouble is you don't know much about it. It could be four by nine, it could be three by 12, it could be one by 36, it could be a four and a half by eight. You actually kind of know nothing much about that rectangle at all. Until I say, oh, oh I forgot to add one important adjective. It's a symmetrical rectangle, a symmetrical quadrilateral. 
And then people realize symmetry. Symmetry is the story that makes the quadratic form, this whole quadratic equation work, work. If I told you this is symmetrical, it's actually, oh, sorry, it's, not, it's, not, it's a rectangle of area 36, but it's actually a symmetrical rectangle of 36, then you know it actually must be a symmetrical square, that's six by six. Soon as you add the word symmetry, all your uncertainty collapses down to certainty. That's the power. People realized the story between the, for solving these types of equations was the power of symmetry in the story of rectangles. Got that. That's what the quadratic form is really about, but I'm going to make it this picture, the power of symmetry in drawing boxes. Let's just draw squares. In fact, people even call these equations the equations that could be solved by the square method. And the Latin word for square is quadratus. So these became known as the quadratus equations, equations that could be solved by the square method. Hence, we call them today in English the quadratic equations, the equations that could be solved by the square method. That's it. That's the key to the story. So, it's wonderful, amazing, powerful thinking. You know, if you really need to solve it, sure, top into software algebra. But that thinking is what I want to go through today. So I'm going to teach you, go through with you, as an exercise in problem solving, the quadratus method. How do we solve scary looking equations with the power of using our wits, follow our nose, with the power of symmetry at hand as well when we draw these rectangles. We'll draw symmetrical rectangles, we'll draw squares. Okay, so I'm going to do this like a video game. I'll do a series of levels of equations to solve, and we'll start with some very simple ones and work away from level one to level two, level three, and it's only actually four, five, six levels. I think it's six, or well, six, there's not many. Each one is straightforward, but each one's an increment of deeper thinking, and it's kind of fun. All right, so when you're ready, we'll go to the quadratus method in the next video.